All right. So, John, welcome to the show. I'm so excited you're here. Woo woo. Yay. We're here. <laughs> Yay. Success. I know. We, su we survived a hurricane to, uh, to record this, so it's all good. I know. I'm so excited you're here to discuss and recap your participation in ASI's Promo in the Wild campaign. So, what inspired you to participate, John? Well, it's actually funny because I got bombarded over the course of, I think, five days of both the emails. It was all <laughs> like, it was, I was, it was one of those things at first. I was like, oh, all right, there it is. It's in my, uh, you know, there's, there's an email from ASI. Then I got another one. Then I got another one. I'm like, oh, I should probably check this out. And then all at the same time, when I was getting bombarded, our vice president of sales, Brian Porter, he sent something out to all the sales team. He's like, hey, you know, uh, check this out. Let, let's, let's all get behind this. So then I forgot all about it, right? And then all of a sudden I wake up like Saturday morning and like, I'm like, why are all of our salespeople posting? Like, what are they doing? And then, and then I scroll back. I'm like, oh, this is the 400 emails I got. So then, you know, that turned into, uh, I might as well get involved. So I think that's are. I think that's awesome. And honestly, thank you so much to you and your team. I saw all their posts and I was like, they're so creative. So I loved it. And I especially love yours because you were our first winner for our contest in July. <laughs> we, we, we. 25 bucks in the house. <laughs> um, you did a 4th of July post that had a American flag, a, uh, a logoed cooler, and then also it had nooners in it. So what kind of went into the creation of this winning post for our Promo in the Wild campaign? Uh, well, so the nooners thing is... It was crazy. So I was actually, I bought Nooners because I was influenced on social media by Dave Portnoy and Barstool. They've gotten behind <laughs> High Noon. So, and they're a huge merch pusher and, you know, mm. huge into promotional products. Obviously, their their own merch, which is done through our industry, is massive. So that got me into the whole, like, you know, downward spiral of Nooners. So then I had them laying around being the fourth. And I actually had them from the night before. Okay. So I put a bunch of, I have a pool and I had all the stuff out of the pool. It's one of those things where like at the end of the day, you just leave your cooler and all the stuff's poolside and you clean up whatever you want. So right. I had it from the night before with ice still in it from the, from the next day. So I was like, oh, this will make a good post. Like it shows, you know, value of that cool, our coolers actually, you know, work well. And, you know, I, my, it was a windy day. So the American flag was rocking. So I just, you know, put a few other things together. But yeah, I just found that cooler with some nooners on my uh, back porch. It, you know, we, stuff we use every day. So yeah, and I think it's awesome. Like the cool thing about this campaign, I wasn't sure um, this is the first as me being a new person to ASI. Uh, kind of integrated social media campaign that we've done and just the response from everybody in the promo industry. And I think it's created a, a level of awareness for end buyers of just the prevalence of promo everywhere. So I loved how topical it was. I love the elements that you put in and it was just like a really neat snapshot. So what do you think are some of the benefits of brands or companies using social media contests? So the first thing, so I actually, I saw the real value in this um, probably about five years ago. I entered into like an online meet uh, contest. Uh, it's horrible. I don't remember the, the name of the company. Um, totally cool. But anyway, so yeah, probably that doesn't go well for brand recognition. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're the huge like online meat delivery people. Uh, oh, Omaha Steak. Omaha Steak. Yeah. So they had a contest where – what was it? You had to enter. It was some sort of like cheesy online contest. I, I, I timed it out. And then next thing you know, four weeks later, I had this huge frozen cooler of tons of meats delivered to my house. And I've probably ordered five or six times randomly since then from Omaha Steaks. I would have never done it. And I still get their social media posts all the time. So, you know, I know more about like, you know, different meats that Omaha Steaks is serving up for the holidays. Right. So, it works. Um, it doesn't take that much effort, right? I mean, granted, you guys kind of really got behind it and, you know, made it rain. But, um, <laughs> you know, ultimately, it's just one of those things. People like free stuff. You know, yeah. that's our industry, right? People love getting free stuff. So um, I think one of my – I did a social post early on where – I was like, hey, if you share this post, you'll get, uh, we'll send you something. Like, and we'll pick one person from the US and Canada. And that one, it blew up. 
because people just you, know, it's, you click one simple button for the chance to do that. I mean, look at all those, those RV posts that were going around social media about four months ago where everybody was like, oh, share this and you might win this one RV. And yeah. it had like 50,000 shares. And, you know, it, that was probably worth it to Jayco or whoever the company was giving away that RV. So Yeah, that awareness piece is incredible. Like brands that you wouldn't even made me think of as a consumer. And I feel like that's what it's about. It's just like that top level in your funnel, you know, you're trying to pique somebody's interest and it's a simple, you know, way to get somebody involved with your company, you know, as a potential customer. So I totally agree with that. And the drum roll, the other reason that I wanted you on this podcast today is Starline has won a promotional campaign award for the category best use in social media. So congratulations. We did it, yay. Yeah. I wanted to ask you though about your strategy for social media with Starline. What do you think are some of the benefits? Do you have any tips for um, uh, maybe people who are looking to use social media and their social strategy? Yeah, so I, I'm just kind of along for the ride with it. I mean, so we have a, uh, our vice president marketing, Julie, she heads up a, a lot of our social media content, but what happened was, is like when, you know, the, the old Rona rolled in in March, um, we, we were looking around and we posted like one video and it, it just took off. And we thought we were the best at social media ever yeah. because we were doing a live video. But then we quickly realized that people had nothing else but to, any, nothing else to do but to stay on social media all day. And anything you put up was awesome. So we put up some horrible content for like a week and it just exploded. And we thought we were like the best people ever at social media. We're like, we love this. This is so easy. And then we kept doing it. And then as like, you know, uh, things started to open back up, we realized it wasn't just this like, you know, you know, throwing stuff out there. And we were getting things with, you know, 50 shares, 5,000 views. We were, we were, we thought we were crushing it. But then I think then reality hit that, you know, there's a lot of consistency I think you need is, you know, I think Starline's, big on not over posting, right? You see some of those companies in our industry who are selling services to try to hawk, you know, people's stuff and they just post like 60 times a day and mm-hmm. nobody wants that. So I think we try to keep a concise message that is okay. useful and we're trying to not throw a bunch of garbage out there. I know Julie's pretty um, in tune with the, what times work well for our industry. You know, there's certain times of the day that get better engagement. Um, so it's, you know, it's trying to time the analytics side of it with the good content. At the end of the day, like, if you put garbage out there, people, I mean, outside of the first week of the Rona, people aren't going to watch it. Um, so, you know, we can, we found that we can have the most popular person in the industry on a video. Uh, and if it's just like, meh, then people aren't going to watch it. But the second you right. get some, some momentum behind some great content, it really explodes. I mean, we did a, we recorded a live broadcast yesterday that just blew it out of the water in terms of views. And we would have, you know, Kevin's an awesome guy, but he's not, you know, this, his household name across the industry where everybody knows. And it was great content. Dude shows up in a bow tie. It's good content. So. Right. Well, that being said, and I liked a lot, just to kind of like summarize some of your points, I think that you guys are very strategic about the messaging, the time, and then also like being purposeful. Cause like you said, you know, I think it's a constant battle in social media. It's the frequency, right? You know, like if you're only getting 3% of your followers to see a single post, cause that's what they talk about for organic yeah. without you necessarily putting money behind. And maybe if you're trying to establish yourself or you're somebody who hasn't maybe found their footing on social, it's like, do I do more? Do I scale back and just really try to make it quality? But I think time and time again, the more people that I speak to, that are in our industry like you, they always go back to quality. It's like, what's going to serve our audience? What's going to keep them informed? What's helpful? And like you said, you know, making that quick shift when they have to, Um, you know, during times, like especially this year, I think a lot of people, ourselves included, you know, we had things planned out for a couple of weeks or months about what we wanted to kind of check boxes for, for social. And then COVID hit, you know, and yeah. it's some of the stuff that was relevant a couple of weeks ago would just completely come off either tone deaf or insensitive to our audience or wasn't really serving them. Like it would look nice, you know, it would sound nice, but it wasn't really something of interest to them. So I'm really, um, you know, so impressed with everybody that I've spoken to in promo this year about how they've made that quick pivot to serve their audience and continue to do it during this time. So how much like would you say for your social media strategy, do you guys um, either a plan in advance or maybe have changed this year? 
So yeah, that's a great point. I mean, so hmm. you know, we have a marketing calendar and all that fun yeah. stuff where you know, you're, you're trying to you know align with the the business cycles. But I think a lot of that is Julie's very on 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 schedule. She's got you know, a great plan on how to do things, and then. Okay. Brian and I come in kind of wrecking ball a little bit and we'll be like, Hey, in 15 minutes, we're going to do a live video that we didn't Dang. promote. Nobody knows we're going to do it. And here we go. And we just threw it together in the last, you know, the last five minutes of, of, of chatting. And I think some of that spontaneity works well. Yeah. Now we, we could be doing a lot better if we promoted it. And, but I think the end of the day, just be genuine. Like all this post produced stuff. I mean, people are like, you know, we did two, uh, video episodes of our BP and J segment where it was that you know, we had this fancy intro and there was a fancy exit and then it just was like meh. But now <laughs> it's so much better because we never know when it's going to go live. So the first 10 seconds of like every live video uh, broadcast that we do is just, just like odd. Like, are we live? Are we not live? <laughs> but that makes Those a much better intro. <laughs> it's such a better intro than some like po you know, post-produced cheesy intro. So uh, that's my actually my favorite part of the product of the live uh, feeds every time so yeah, yeah no I think that's cool and I love that it sounds like um you said her name was Juliet Julie. yeah Julie, Julie. okay yeah. I just want to make sure so Julie it sounds like she's the person who kind of keeps the structure the KPIs the goals but you guys kind of come in and throw in fresh ideas which I think is like that perfect mix right you know like stuff that you can capitalize that's new in the now but also making sure like if there's points that your company wants to hit throughout the year you're being cognizant of that yeah. so I'm going to put you on the spot what is your favorite social media platform what do you think all right, so in terms of content consumption, I'm a big like Twitter consumer. Really? I don't necessarily okay. post, but I'm a big consumer. I mean, it's, it's like the first thing I do when I wake up is check Twitter feeds. Okay. Um, it's just a great, I mean, I, I don't have time to read every like news article in the morning. So yeah. if I can just get like a basic thing of what's going on, mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's personally I, as far as consumption. Obviously, you know, Instagram is probably where it's at, um, I guess you know, for, you know, a lot of visual content, but our industry loves Facebook still, right? I mean, if you look at the demographics of the industry, it really aligns with the demographics. It does. You know, it's like, well, our promotion product salesperson is checking out their grandkid pics. They're also, you know, <laughs> talking their promo. Yeah, post those pics of their dog. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, here, here, here's my dog. And here, here's, here's my, you know, grandkids. And uh, do you want to buy some shirts? Right. So, I mean, I think that just works for our industry. And, and we look, there's some industry groups on Facebook that are, you know, 10,000 people strong and super active. So, right. I think for our industry, I think we get the most engagement there. Mm. But I think personally... Uh, you know, I think, it, but it's great. Like the biggest brands in our industry on Twitter are just like wah wah, right? You'll go to like some of the the top five suppliers and distributors, and they'll have like killer content, and they'll have like one like it's like oh, what happened here? Right? <laughs> and then like somebody from Barstool could post something stupid and get a hundred thousand likes, right? And it's just it's it's just it's crazy that we as an industry don't live there as much. Mm. But I think there's there's a lot to it. But I you know I think it's. It'll be interesting to see as the demographics change of our industry, like, will, you know, who knows what's going to happen with TikTok, right? Because that's its own political, you know, fight. Yeah. Um, but it's how will our industry it. adopt that? And you're, some of the traditional content creators aren't living in those spheres right now. So are they going to, and, you know, is our, you know, younger demographic of, you know, Salesforce, going to use that to reach out to a younger buying market, which right. hopefully the answer is yes. But then, you know, you get to the, how do you monetize it and make it, you know, worthwhile. But no, I love your answer. I mean, honestly, I am the same way where Twitter, like from a personal standpoint, it's my news. You know what yeah. I mean? Like for me, I don't always have an hour to sit and watch world news. So I can get up in the morning, look at the trending topics and be brought to lives or articles that, you know, I get my information, I can educate myself. So I kind of know what's going on. And it's like that bite sized chunk. So I think it's very convenient. And a lot of professionals, like whether they think it like about it or not are getting their information about what's going on through social, you know? And like you said, the alignment between like 
our demographic, which is, you know, uh, I think an older demographic, it kind of falls into, or at least the power players, I would say, yeah. Facebook. But the visual aspect for Instagram for us, I mean, people like, you know, I think especially now, you know, I love when people are talking about using Zoom or video conferencing to do like dynamic one-to-ones with like a certain prospect. And I think like that behind the scenes, you know, that people like to see, like if they can't physically go to a trade show, maybe especially now because of everything going on, they can go to somebody's Instagram profile, get an interactive video of somebody demoing a product, what that looks like, you know, being able to answer questions on an Instagram, Instagram live. So it's a little bit more interactive, but I'll be really curious, like you said, like, you know, millennials are coming into their buying power. There's a new wave of professionals coming in, like, what's going to be the next big thing for us? Will it be TikTok if it survives? Will it be Reels that just yeah. got released this week? Like who remains to see? But I think it's always good, like you guys are doing, is evaluating what works best, you know, like for your company. You know? Yeah, it's, I think a lot of people in our, in our industry saw Instagram as this, pay, as this place to post like sales flyers. Like if you go <laughs> to your company page and it's all just promotional flyers <laughs> for crap that you sell, you're probably doing it right. I found one company this morning in our industry that was like, everything was just like a sales flyer, right? It's like, shows like, this is a chance to show some personality of your company, what your people, some cool stuff that you're working on and not just hawk just the same old, same old stuff every day. So I, you know, it's, it's, you can be active, but if you're posting the wrong stuff, you're not going to get a lot of engagement. And that's where, you know, Julie's all over the engagement. she will be like, look, you know, it's like, you know, we can post 20% less than some of these big players, but if our engagement is crushing them, I don't, I mean, nobody cares. And that's, that's where it's all at is, you know, we want to engage with our community. So. Yeah. I mean, I think honestly, like a lot of people think about the followers, but if you have good engagement, you know, if you have a couple of hundred to a thousand people who are like, interested in you, your product, they want to buy, like you're golden, you know, as yeah. a brand. So the most important question that we should definitely end on is how are you going to spend your winnings now that you're $25 richer from <laughs> our, our my, my 25 bucks. Um, <laughs> honestly, I'm probably going to go buy some tacos and burritos. Uh, it's what I would do. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's <laughs> probably the, the, the most feasible and the you know, most economically thing I could do right now is buy myself some burritos. I don't miss many burrito opportunities. That trophy back there is actually from me winning a burrito eating competition. So, really? Yeah. Oh my God, that's awesome. Yeah, that's it's awesome. Hilarious. It's uh, yeah, not, not everything you're proud of in life, but if you get a giant trophy for it, you might as well just own it. <laughs> I love that that's like the origin. I saw that in the background. I'm like, I wonder what that's for. And Most I'm people think I bowl. They're like, are you in the bowling? I'm like, nope. <laughs> I'm like, I'm into eating. So. <laughs> I love burritos. <laughs> I love burritos. Thank you very much. And I have a trophy to prove it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time today, John. You are a lovely guest. Thank you for your insight. Congratulations again on your award. Thank you so much for your participation in our campaign. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. It's been fun. Thank <laughs> you.